there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel we're sitting in the bay going a buck 20 in the Buick so this is the 05 Le Sabre Limited that we just did the video on the mass airflow the skipping and the bucking I mentioned to you guys that you know the speedo here is broke customer also states that the fuel gauge doesn't work I haven't been able to get a hold of them so I really don't know how much gas is in the vehicle you know is it indeed working right there I thought he said once the fuel level went down sometimes it worked which would tell me, you know, fuel level sensor. So we're going to do a little bit of what we can, you know, without talking to the customer to see gauge gone wonky, level sensor gone wonky, what's the story? So I still got our scan tool pop, uh, hooked up here. So we're going to pop into some data stream. We're going to go into the ECM. And we're going to look. Oops. Whoa, hang on, fellas. Let's see if I can do this left-handed with my meat nuggets here. We're going to go into our EVAP data. Because our fuel level sensor and stuff, I believe, goes to the ECM first before it goes to the cluster. We can always double check that. Fuel tank remaining. I think that's going to be the only one we have that we need. All right, so we'll look at that. See what it says. So that says 75%. Our gauge is sitting at almost, I would say, 90%. Let's shake the car here. Let's get this baby a rocking. There we go, so our fuel level sensor seems to work. Hopefully you guys can see that. Enhance. Enhance. All right, let's see, what else we got? We got a window line graph so we can see our fuel level sensor. Here, we'll shake the car. If this car's a rockin', don't come a knockin'. So we can see that works. Our fuel gauge is still, like I say, that's about 90%. So this gives us a rough idea, all right? Uh, let's see, what do we want to do next? We'll pop out of here and we're going to go into our instrument cluster. We're going to go into special tests sometimes. Instrument panel module, which I think that's going to be the heater. So we want instrument panel cluster. We don't want it in here though. We want to go to special tests. We want to see if we can do a gauge sweep with it. If that makes sense. A lot of times you can command it to do a display test just like that. It'll light up all the segments, it'll sweep the gauges, give us an idea of what's up. All right, I'll hold you. I will hit display test down here. And here we go. All right, let me shut that back off. Let the gauges come back to life here. Sometimes that takes a second. We might even have to cycle the key. <clears throat> It did not look like it moved. All of the gauges should sweep at this point. Ready, we'll do it again. So it looks like temp and tack are the only ones that worked. Fuel gauge, however, speedometer did not do anything. We'll try to give it the old, the old taparoo here. Take and drop it down. I'll do that while we sweep it. You ready? Nope. Nothing, fella. All right. Well, that's something. So in regards to the fuel level sensor, you know, how do we know it's receiving this input? Well, we can look at a wiring diagram. I'm 95% certain it goes to the ECM first, then to the cluster over uh, the data lines. This car's old enough. It's going to be class 2 data. And I believe that's where our tack input's going to come from, our coolant temp. It's none of it, none of those sensors go directly to the cluster. So, with that being said, we know that the dash has communication. You know, obviously we can talk to it. Uh, the ECM can send some of its data there. These gauges are super failure prone. We know it's receiving speed input because when I drive down the road, one thing I did look at is a triple odometer that counts up correctly. If this cluster was not receiving speed input from the ECM, our trip odometer over there would not work. Just with a short test, I'm confident to not do anything else other than to pull that cluster, send it in, get the stepper motors replaced. Uh, you guys are going to ask why I don't do it myself because I don't. <laughs> First of all, we like to send it in. <clears throat> send it to United Radio. They do all of our clusters. We get a warranty with it. It comes back shiny new in a nice package, and everybody's happy. Customer also had a couple complaints about the backlighting on the display here so those ones seem to work but the airflow and the fan and the auto and the off do not light up 
what these ones do. So I can turn them up and down and see if we can see that. Whoa, that's too bright. Let me see if I can. Oh, hang on. See if I can block some of the light for you here. We can make sure this dimmer works. There we go. Give the classic reach around. That's down. That's up. Oops, that's up too high. That's down. All right, so they seem to definitely function. I will check and see if United Radio can fix those too. I don't know if they're just regular bulbs behind them. All right, folks, so that's it. Pretty confident making the call on the cluster, just given the problems that he has, and be able to send that in and get that fixed up. That's where I send all my clusters. United Radio Supply, they're right in Syracuse. I send them up, they get there in a day, have them back the next day, everybody's good. And that is also using a scan tool to our benefit doing the bi-directional controls and stuff and now we don't even have to worry about getting excuse me getting into the fuel level sensor now with that being said the fuel level sensors are very high failure rate on these cars almost as much as the clusters are so i do have to make my customer aware yes the cluster is bad you know the fuel gauge does not work the stepper motor there doesn't work we could clearly see that when we did a self-test but when we put it back in if all of a sudden you know your gauge is wonky now we may have more problems. The only way to tell that definitively is to run this thing low on fuel and do you know, a sweep with the fuel level sensor that's in the tank. So I try to you know, reiterate to them, you know, that's a possibility, particularly on a GM, very, very failure prone. Their fuel level sensors go bad all the time, cars, trucks, vans, everything. Very poorly made and they just fail. And that's just the way it is. Not trying to knock GM before you get all pumped up, but it's just, it's just a matter of fact. And then as far as the backlighting on his temperature temperature control, I don't know. I'll look and see if those are replaceable bulbs on our end or if it's, you know, built into the, you know, board there, whatever. Go down, click subscribe, ring the bell. You know what to do. And uh, just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.